Hey guys, in this lesson I'm going to be talking to you guys about glucose transporters, what they are, uh, the different types of glucose transporters, where they are found in the body, and their relevance to whole body metabolism. So to begin, why do we need glucose transporters? Well, the reason is, is because glucose is hydrophilic. And as you can see in this depiction of glucose here, glucose has many hydroxyl groups, which makes it very hydrophilic. So that means it's not easily transported across cellular membranes. So that's why we need transporters. So there are actually two types of transporters. The first type are the glutes, the, or the glucose transporters. And there are actually 14 different types of glutes. They are all sodium and ATP independent and they are ubiquitous, so they're found all throughout the body in all cell types. The other type of glucose transporter are known as the sodium-dependent glucose transporters, or the SGLTs. And these are, as their name suggests, they're sodium-dependent, and they require ATP, because ATP is actually used to form a sodium gradient that is used to transport uh, glucose into the cell. And they're located in a few different locations in the body, um, particularly the intestine, renal tubules, and the blood-brain barrier. So to begin with glucose transporters, um, there are actually five very important glucose transporters in the body, GLUT1 to GLUT5. The rest of the glucose transporters um, are, have not really well uh, been well characterized, and they don't seem to be very um, significant to whole body metabolism. So I'm just going to talk to you guys about GLUT1 to GLUT5. So the, for GLUT1, um, these ones are found in the blood, so in red blood cells or erythrocytes. They're also found in the blood-brain barrier. And they're also found in the heart, but to a lesser extent. So the heart has very minimal amounts of GLUT1. But uh, the blood, the red blood cells, actually use GLUT1 heavily to uptake glucose. And the main important uh, key point for GLUT1 is that they are insulin independent. So, um, for instance, red blood cells never need insulin to uptake glucose. So they always use glucose, um, even without insulin present. So for GLUT2, these are found in the liver pancreas, and in small intestine as well. And uh, these are also uh, insulin independent, and they have a high michaelis menten constant, or high KM, which means they have a very low affinity for glucose. So uh, that means that uh, the liver, the pancreas, and small intestine only uptake glucose through GLUT2 when uh, glucose, trans, uh, glucose concentrations are very high. So this makes sense. Um, a lot of times the liver um, will, won't take up any glucose. It'll let the rest of the body take glucose um, for, for other usage. But the, the liver will uptake glucose through GLUT2 when glucose concentrations are very high. So it'll up, uptake glucose to uh, store it as glycogen. And the pancreas does this as well with beta cells. Um, beta cells will uptake glucose when glucose concentrations are relatively high, which means then um, the beta cells will uptake glucose and then the beta cells will, will release insulin to uh, to compensate for the high glucose level. The next glucose transporter is GLUT3. This is found in the brain, in the neurons, and also in sperm. Um, this one is also insulin independent, and uh, this, the key point with GLUT3 is that it has a low michaelis menten constant, which means it has a very high affinity for glucose. So that means that the brain and the neurons in the brain always uh, take up glucose, and they do it with a high affinity. So if there's any glucose present at all, they will make sure that they take up the glucose. So um, as always, the brain um, makes sure that it takes up its uh, required uh, energy uh, substrates, it makes sure that it maintains its metabolism at a at a constant state, regardless of what's going on in the rest of the body. So just remember guys that GLUT3 has a very um, high affinity for glucose, which means it's always, uh, typically always saturated with glucose. And as well, it's also insulin independent. For GLUT4, um, these are found in the skeletal muscle, adipose tissue, and the heart. So, as I mentioned before, the heart has um, GLUT1 as well, which is insulin independent, and it also has GLUT4. Now, GLUT4 um, actually outnumbers GLUT1 in the heart by about a 3 to 1 ratio. So, GLUT4 is a little bit more important for heart metabolism than GLUT1 is. And the main key point for GLUT4 is that GLUT4 is actually insulin dependent. So, this is why um, insulin actually allows... Uh, uptake of glucose is because it actually acts through GLUT4. 
And again, this uh, GLUT uh, transporter has a moderate KM, which means it has a moderate affinity for glucose. But the main point for GLUT4 is that it is insulin dependent. So when insulin is released, that allows the translocation and uh, the, the incorporation of GLUT4 into the cell membranes of skeletal muscle, adipose tissue, and the heart to, uh, to allow those uh, organs to uptake glucose. And the last glute I want to talk to you guys about is glute 5. And these uh, glucose transporters are found in the enterocytes of the intestinal epithelium. So, and they're particularly on the luminal side. So they face the lumen of the small intestines. And these are, again, these are also insulin independent. And these are important for fructose transport. So they actually uptake fructose um, through glute 5. So that means that fructose is always taken up by glute 5. And finally, I'm going to talk to you guys about the sodium-dependent glucose transporters. So um, SGLT1 is uh, also found in enterocytes of the intestinal uh, epithelium. Again, this is also on the luminal side, so it faces the lumen of the small intestine. Uh, and these two are also insulin-independent, and they are also ATP and sodium-dependent uh, as, uh, as they are S SGLT. And they're important for glucose absorption. So typically, um, glucose is first uptake, uptaken into the, uh, into the enterocytes of the intestinal epithelium um, through SGLT1. And so this is the first transporter that glucose typically comes into contact with. And SGLT2 um, is found in the proximal tubule of a nephron. So a nephron is the functional unit of the kidney. So, and these are uh, also insulin independent um, and ATP and sodium dependent, and these are very important for glucose retention. So um, these transporters are very important so that you do not lose glucose in your urine. So um, and this is this comes into play during diabetes when when uh, blood levels of glucose are so high that um, these transporters become saturated and you actually lose um, some of your glucose in your urine. So that's why you get uh, you get uh, glycosuria. So that's the main reason, but the main function of these um, transporters, SGLT2 transporters, is glucose retention. Anyways guys, that was a quick lesson on glucose transporters. I hope you found it helpful. Please like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.